in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Llewellyn Scholes, Senior Pastor of House of Praise Ministries. And I'm grateful today to say the word of the Lord with you. We know that there are many times that we go to through troubling times. We also face challenges. But we have seen what God's word can do. And many times, even in their difficulties, we need to see God as a refuge. Today, I would like to share a portion of the word with you. And firstly, my title of the message, the giver is inside the gift. Let me repeat it. The giver is inside the gift. And we're going to find our portion of scripture reading in a famous scripture called John 3 verse 16. For most of you, it's your favorite scripture. And also for me, John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Also in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. In realizing this, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What I'm realizing that without the way, we can't go. Without the truth, we don't know. And without his life, we can't live. No one comes to the Father except through me. Meaning that Jesus is the entrance of God. But when I read John 3.16, I get interested because now, for God so loved the world, meaning that's the greatest object, that he gave his only begotten son, which is the greatest gift, that whosoever believes in him, which is the greatest promise, should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm here to say that Jesus is a gift to this world. Many didn't see him as a gift the day he was born. Some saw him as opposition. Some saw, is this really the Messiah? But he is a gift to this world. His birth was miraculous. His life was amazing. His ministry was revolutionary. His death was unforgettable. And his resurrection was memorable. Not only that, his ascension was glorious. This was Jesus because he is a gift to this world. As a gift, he loved mankind. As a gift, he healed people. As a gift, he delivered people. As a gift, he opened the eyes of the blind. This was a gift to this world. Jesus gave hope. Within his ministry of three and a half years, he gave hope to the people. The words which he released was words of hope. And that is what we need in this day because Jesus is that gift. He is a gift also to you right now. And he even prayed for people. That is a gift. Now, when I speak about a gift, we always get excited because in most cases, when you get a gift, it's either your birthday or you've done something and someone appreciates you. And that's the reason why we need to appreciate Jesus in this time for what is done in our lives because he is a gift, not only to this world, but he is a gift to you. Now, John, the Apostle John that wrote the book John is a disciple also of Jesus. Very profound. When he starts out writing, he starts with the following words in the beginning. When I look at Matthew, I see Matthew actually starts with the beginning of Jesus, but with his lineage, where he comes from, through a bloodline. When I analyze uh, the gospel of Mark, I see he starts with John the Baptist, which was a forerunner. When I look at Luke, I see where he starts also with the lineage. So here, all these three writers were actually started the book with Jesus, but with a specific portion. John felt that he could not start at the lineage of Jesus because his beginning was prior to the incarnation. When I use the word incarnation, I am actually referring to where Jesus was born through a virgin. God manifested in the flesh. John feels like I'm going to go right to the beginning. Why? Because John believed that Jesus is the beginning. Not only is he be the beginning, but we know according to the word, he is the beginning and he's also the ending. Not only that, he believed that Jesus 
was not any mere person. That Jesus was the incarnate God. He wanted to prove in his writings that Jesus was the Messiah and also the only true God. And he wanted to display that Jesus as the central figure and focus of creation. That's important that we must understand. Because when we look at creation and when we talk about creation, the creation started with the beginning. Because when the beginning started, the creation started. When the creation started, the beginning started. Both these two run parallel, which I want to say with you. Now, when we read a portion of scripture, we find Jesus as the originator and also the facilitator of creation. Colossians 1 verse 16. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. I love this part. All things were created through him and for him. When I started reading, I was saying all things were created by him. Now we see through him and later on we see for him. So it was created by him, through him and for him. And throughout this word, I'll be sharing that. Also Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, we read the following, especially now that we focus on all things. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, exact representation according to scripture, upholding all things by the word of his power. Meaning that all things now is associated with the word. Not only associated with the word, but with the word of his power. Jesus made a statement when he said that all power belongs to me that are in heaven and that are on the earth. Meaning Jesus being the very word has the same power. The power is not split because it's one power because we believe that Jesus is the word. Also Colossians 1 verse 15 says he is the image of the invisible God. When I talk about enemies, I need to say this. Man was created in the image of God, but Jesus was not created. Jesus is the image of God. He is the exact representation. Jesus is not created. Why I say that? Because in the scripture we find he is the creator. Now, if I look at the writings of Paul and John, I see that Paul places great emphasis that Jesus is the image of God. Whereby John the Apostle writes and is declaring that Jesus is the word of God. Is there a difference? No, there is no difference because he is the image and he's also the word. And I need to declare over your life today while I'm sharing and while I'm talking about image and the word. You are created in the image of God. And every person that's created in the image of God can allow the word of God to be spoken over your life. Because the word has power. The word controls our system. When someone speaks a good word about us, we feel great. A great word. When someone speaks bad about you, you feel very bad. And that's the power of words. So our construct, our human being, is also constructed with words. Today I would like to declare that words has power over your life and it shall release positive things. Now, I've realized sometimes you always find a sick person going to a doctor and the doctor will make a prediction, not a prophecy, and say you only have six months to live. How many times have we heard that kind of report that doctors release? The words of the doctor is powerful and he may be correct in his prediction, but God as the source of creation has the final say. Sometimes people take these words, they accept it and it becomes a reality. And after six months, you find the person has passed away. Why? Because they believe that word. I come against every words of death and I bind it in the name of Jesus over your life. I come against the words that has been spoken over you, that is limiting you, that is frustrating you. I come against it in the name of Jesus and I ask you to receive the words of Jesus, which is the word of life. That is the report of the doctor. Get the report of the divine doctor by the name of Jesus. He has the final say because he is the word in your life and over your life. The word has always been there. Before the mountains, there was a word. 
Before the seas, there was a word. Before the animals, there was a word. And you need to know that the word was in the beginning. In your beginning, the word is there. So God is the word. I realize that the word is associated with creation. Amen. And when the word is associated with, with creation, we find that God now is the God of time. He's not only the God of time, but he's also the God of eternity. So he's God of both dimensions. In his essence, he is still God. And that is what I need to share with you. Because God wanted to connect himself with creation. Therefore, he revealed himself as the word. The mediating principle that upholds all things by the word of his power. God controls everything through his word. His word has intelligence. God doesn't need to remind the sun every time to come up in the morning. God doesn't need to remind the moon that it's going to be half moon. It's either a low tide or a high tide. Whatever God has created through his word has intelligence. The orbits, the space, how the earth moves. Everything which God has created has intelligence. God has created you and you have that intelligence. Let me share it further with you that you can understand the dimension of eternity and also time. Now in eternity, God is in his essence. And I'm going to explain it to you. And when God is in his essence, he is the omniscient God. He is the omnipotent God. He is omnipresent God. That is who he is. So in mentioning essence, we refer to the very nature of God. And the nature of God, he is the spirit. Not any spirit. He is the eternal spirit. I want to make this example that you can understand. When you make a fire, when you make a fire and the fire is burning, when you're going to move close to the fire, there will be something that you'll be feeling. You will be feeling heat. So the fire has a way of expressing the essence and that is heat. You must understand that God is a God of expressions. So to understand God as the word, you need to understand how God expressed himself. Sometimes we move close to the fire. You may burn, but when you move close to the fire, what you will feel is the heat. So you will feel the expression of the fire, which is heat, which is very important because we come in contact with God through expressions. Because we cannot feel eternity. We feel time because we were created in time. And God has expression or expressed himself as the word. We can feel him. We can touch him and we can experience him. That is God. Now let me share something with you. The heat of the fire cannot be separated from the fire. Because the, an expression only exists if there is an essence. If there's an expression, there must be an essence. I want to say that with you that you can understand it deeper. When essence emanates, expression is created. Now God created us. I'm going to share the scripture with you. That you can understand what I am saying. A famous scripture. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, which is his essence, so is he in his expressions. So whatever is in your mind will be manifested in your life. If you are negative and if you feel things aren't going your way, that is going to be manifested in your life. So the essence and the expression goes hand in hand. Essence is what's inside of you. Expression is what you release with your mouth. The words which you release, that becomes your expression. Amen. I hope you understand that because the expression cannot be separated from the essence. It is how it is emanated or how it is revealed or how it is manifested. Now this God which we serve is a God that has essence of majesty, essence of greatness, essence of love. And he wanted to express it to the world. And the only way he could express it let me share it with you. Is to start creation. He ripped out a piece out of eternity. And started creation. Because he wanted to express his essence to mankind. He wanted to express his greatness. He wanted to express that he has all power. That's the reason why he revealed himself as the word. I'm getting excited. 
Let me share it with you. God expressed himself to Moses in the cloud. When the people of God was directionless, God was leading them and he expressed himself through a cloud. Not only that, God expressed himself as El Sadai and also Jehovah Rapha to Abraham in time of need. When he needed provision, God expressed himself to Moses as a water breaker. When Moses was standing in front of the Red Sea, he didn't know left from right and God stepped in broke the waters and the people came through. What am I saying? I'm saying God has a desire to express himself in your life. He has that desire because God is a God of expressions. Most beautifully, we're coming back to the title that the giver was inside the gift. He expressed himself as a gift to this world. He expressed himself as many things in the Old Testament. But profoundly, we are focusing now. He is a gift to this world. He felt that he had love inside of him. And he can only give it through the world or to the world as a gift. Because a gift is something that we don't always deserve. We don't work for it. A gift is something we receive. And grace is also that gift. This was not any gift. The gift was the word became flesh. The word became flesh. That was the greatest gift. When the gift was manifested, when the gift came to this earth. So the very word that spoke creation into existence was wrapped in flesh. John 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh. Not only that, and dwelt among us. No wonder the scripture says, all things were created for him, not only by him, not only through him, but in the New Testament, with the incarnation, we find that the scriptures, we hear that all things were created for him. What am I saying? That the word had to fit into the flesh. When God created flesh, he had flesh in mind that eventually he would manifest in it. No wonder the Bible says all things were created for him. He became flesh. He became flesh. Now, we must understand that the biggest debate is, can God change? Yes, God can change according to his word. The Bible says, and it repented the Lord that he has made man. But in this case of expression, God changed being the word and was manifested in the flesh. But when he was manifested in the flesh, he did not lose his divinity. He did not lose his power. Although he was wrapped in the flesh, so he still had his essence and his divinity was not lost. Now, I made a very profound statement and I would like to explain it by reading the following to you that you can understand the allegory in terms of that he did not lose his essence. So the Atlantic Ocean is big and it's immense and it's without a visible boundary. Having fluid of substance, we're talking about water, we're talking about sea. So if you stir the water inside the ocean, it will form a sort of circle or a hole, but it has a shape inside the hole. But afterwards, it will just revert back to it. I'm trying to paint a picture of God in your mind, but I want to use the ocean as the allegory. So suppose then you have a bottle. And you fill this bottle with the same water. We're going to say salt water or H2O. You fill, you fill it with the same water. And you take this bottle and you throw it into the ocean. Now what you must understand, you have a bottle that's inside the ocean. But you also have the ocean inside the bottle. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because the properties of the water inside the bottle is actually the same as the water outside the bottle. There, but there is a difference. In quality, it is the same. But in quantity, it differs. But the quantity of the ocean is actually greater than the quantity in the bottle. But yet in terms of quality, it is the same. The same water inside is also the same water outside. What am I saying? God, who was in time, existed outside of time. But he also dwelt in the realm of humanity. What am I saying today? I want to say this with you that you can understand. That Jesus is a gift 
to this world. And I know today that as you are sitting here and listening, you need that opportunity just to experience the gift. Jesus was mentioned many things because let me help you. He's called the lion and the lamb. He's also called the sacrifice and also the high priest, the beginning and the ending. But most of all, he is a gift to this world. No wonder Thomas asked these words. Lord, so was the Father. And the Lord opened up these words by saying, Don't you know that the Father is in me? Don't you know that the Father is in me? And that I am in the Father? What was Jesus actually saying? He says, Thomas, don't you understand that I am the gift? And that the giver is inside the gift. Thomas couldn't see the giver inside the gift. And that is what Jesus wanted to portray. But his disciples couldn't understand because he was wrapped in flesh. Now we all know when we talk about a gift, it is wrapped. It is closed. It's an unidentified object that is inside. And that's the reason why many people were confused about Jesus. Because he was wrapped in flesh. But let me say something to you. Any gift that is wrapped must be eventually unwrapped. On the cross... The day of the cross, Jesus Christ was unwrapped. He was unwrapped by Roman soldiers who tore his flesh, who actually pierced his side and he put nails through his hands. On that day, the gift was unwrapped. Do you know what came out of that gift? Blood came out of that gift. The blood was pouring outside of his body and the gift of God was unwrapped to this world because this is what this world needs. The world needs the blood of Jesus which has power, which can change lives, which can remedy things. That was inside the gift. That's the reason why the Sadducees didn't understand Jesus because they didn't know what was inside of him. What was inside of him? The enemy was even confused. The enemy was confused what was inside of Jesus. Because if the enemy knew that the antidote of the world was inside of him, they would not have crucified him. But I'm here to declare the gift had to be unwrapped. I'm declaring right now over your life. There are things that ought to be unwrapped over your life. You have been hidden. Your gift has been hidden. But God wants to unwrap it in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm here to declare right now. That the gift must be unwrapped over your life. Many people don't believe it. Just like Thomas. When Thomas heard that Jesus, when Jesus died, he didn't believe in the resurrection. But eight days after the resurrection, the Bible teaches Jesus appears unto Thomas and also the other disciples. He appeared unto Thomas and he told Thomas, I am the one that is still alive. I am a gift to this world. But you know what he said, Thomas, in order for you to believe, take your finger. Take your finger and place it inside my hands. And when he placed it inside, he saw there was a hole. He saw the nail prints. Not only did Jesus say that, but Jesus said to Thomas, take your hands and put it into my side. When he placed his hands into the side, something happened with Thomas. When he placed his hand inside Jesus, he started declaring and he got excited. Let me rephrase it. When he placed his hand inside the gift, he felt the giver. When he placed his hand inside the mystery, he felt a revelation. When he placed his hand inside the expression, he felt the essence. Let me say it again. When he placed his hand inside the son, he felt the father. Therefore, he uttered these words, my Lord and my God. Those were the words of Thomas when the revelation opened up of who Jesus was. I'm here to declare right now that the gift must be unwrapped. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The gift must be unwrapped in your life. And I'm declaring it right now. Jesus was hidden to the world. But only when he was on the cross, he was unwrapped. It is when you're going to reach a cross level of your life. Where things will unwrap. And the world will see what's inside of you. What was inside of Jesus was meant for you. The blood of Jesus over your life. I would like to conclude with this message. That we can understand today. That in Jesus Christ. God extended himself in the realm of humanity. Therefore, in salvation, we find that the giver was inside the gift. God bless. Amen. Wat is 
lastimé Daría no inmensa Daré un beso, va testimés, daré a no mudar, inmensa canta, daré un beso. Say, Hanada, say, Hanada, say, Hanada. 